What is Cold Pursuit about? Cold Pursuit is, it's hard to put into a genre form. I guess it's a revenge drama with a very, very rich grain of dark humor going through it. What makes this project unique is, yes, it's a revenge drama, but uh, again, it has this, uh, the bad guys you meet are, uh, they're not just uh, one-dimensional characters. You, you kind of get involved in all their lives and you kind of care for them in a strange, warped way, even though they do atrocious acts of violence. But they're, uh, but they're just very richly drawn, and they have a, a great sense of humor. Uh, dark and sort of bleak, but it's humor nonetheless, you know. And my guy is, is a total amateur, just gets caught up in this, this vortex of crime and criminality that never knew existed in this quaint little ski town. What drew me to the project? I uh, had seen the original film, In Order of Disappearance. Um, I thought it was wonderfully well directed by Hans Peter Molens, and we had the same director doing this. Uh, terrific guy, um, terrific director. Um, and Frank Baldwin just delivered this Superb script, uh, set it in modern times and used uh, First Nation actors in Canada playing Native Americans in a way that I don't think an audience has ever seen before. When there was two or three, I loved my scenes with Laura Dern, the great Laura Dern, I should say, and with Tom Jackson who's a bit of a legend in Canada, certainly as an actor, storyteller, singer. Um, uh, we, have, we share a scene towards the end of the film. And I won't spoil it for your audience, but it's, it's, it's rather special for me. You know? The most difficult scenes to shoot were we were at the mercy of the, of the elements in the, uh, Alberta and Canada. There were some days we were surrounded by this magnificent scenery of mountains that are millions, if not billions, of years old. And, uh, very cold, but uh, the weather could change in, in, within minutes. The sun could be shining, cold, and suddenly a storm could come in, you know? Um, uh, you had to, we all wore layers and layers of clothing, so you felt you were like the Michelin man. Um, um, what else? Took a lot of cool showers in the morning to, to help the immune system, you know? That helps when you're out in the elements, you know? But it was, it was, it was fun to shoot. There were some difficult days. There always are with films when you're outside, you know? And uh, there were certain days we had to come off the mountain because the weather pattern had changed and, you know, the Teamsters had to get the equipment down the hill. Um, so that happened a couple of times, but it, it, that added in a way to the drama of the whole piece, you know. Not that I was aware of. There was one incident where my makeup and hair lady and I were in our trailer and the trailer suddenly started moving downhill. And uh, we found out one of the Teamsters trucks had slowly, slowly slid into our trailer. We felt this little bump, and then we just started sliding, and it was a little bit scary, and then it came to a, a stop. Um, it sounds just in the telling of it, just not very interesting. But at the time, it was like quite terrifying, you know? Uh, you're just at the mercy of the elements, you know? They can, what audiences can expect is, uh, I think, a really good, entertaining film where they can have a good laugh, uh, see some interesting drama unfold, and 
get a kick out of a, a weird sort of revenge strategy. And there's some good payoffs too, you know. It's, I think it's best to see Cold Pursuit with an audience in a proper theater um, because you can laugh together. There's, there's, it's great to hear and be part of a communal laugh and tittering and that everybody's getting the same sort of vibe from a film, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they're, they're quiet at the parts that are full of tension and then the release of humor that happens quite a lot in this film, I think. Uh, Cold Pursuit is about um, a man, Liam Neeson, Nels Coxman, uh, taking revenge um, on the murder of his son and sort of understanding the world that his son was involved in as well. So it's sort of, I suppose it's about grief and, and dealing with that as well, but in a very dark comedy, action-packed way. It's unlike any other film in that there is a lot of comedy to it. It's very dark comedy. Um, when I first read the script, it sort of reminded me of a Coen Brothers Tarantino sort of type. Um, you don't quite know whether to laugh or not. It's very sort of um, down the line like that. My character comes in, I suppose, as a bit of a... Uh, not complete comic, but he's the sort of antidote to Liam's sort of grief and gravity and he's hunting me down and, and then you sort of come into the world of my character, Viking, who is this um, leader of this sort of drug gang. Um, and you sort of get introduced to that sort of quite crazy, bizarre world. White Ball and my, my character has inherited this company, this um, drug dealing company. Um, it's not really a company, it's not like it's got limited. Um, he's inherited this uh, gang of criminals from his father who had a pact with White Ball, um, who's played by Tom Jackson. Um, and they had an understanding that they would only deal and uh, operate in certain areas. I take, because of what Liam does, I mistake that as their gang. So it sort of, it starts off this sort of big war between these two sort of um, kingpins. The role. Selfishly, uh, I read the part and I thought it was one of the coolest, most sort of bizarre, um, challenging things. I'd never really played a character like that before. Um, and then the prospect of working with Liam was 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 wonderful. And um, and then the director, when I met uh, Michael Schamberg, the producer, and and uh, Hans Petter, the director, when I met them, they were so up for me, just playing and having fun and really pushing boundaries um, with what we were doing. That. Um, that's what really drew me to it, yeah. Amazing. Um, I sadly only got a couple of scenes with him, but um, being in a film that he was leading uh, is a wonderful thing. He's so talented, he's so warm and calm and fun, you know, that uh, I loved every second of it, yeah. I learned some lines. <laughs> um, I did. I did quite a lot of rehearsal. Actually, I don't. I don't tend to rehearse too much. But what I wanted to do is do a lot of rehearsal so that on the day I could play. Um, so I sort of exhausted all possible sort of avenues in my mind of where the scene could go, so that come the day I could sort of just play. But a lot of it really was, as I've said, Hans Petter created such an amazing atmosphere on set that we could just kind of go crazy, and we improvised a hell of a lot. Um, we sort of messed around with lines and orders of things so that come the day, it was actually very creative. Um, so it, there's not much you can prepare for, really. It's more sort of know what you're going to come in and what you want to do and what you want to say and then kind of throw it away and play on the day. Uh, wonderful. Yeah, like up, up there. I've never been up a mountain that high. Um, it's so beautiful. Um, and also the sort of self when you step out of a car and it's that cold and it hits you, it's sort of quite... Um, bracing and wonderful um so yeah i loved it it was great and the crew is fantastic i think it was a lot of the crew had worked on like the revenant and stuff so they were used to being out in the cold and the wind and the rain well actually i think they'll come in expecting one thing and they'll they'll, they'll come out with another you know because i think it being a liam neeson uh, revenge action piece is what it's sort of sold as but it's so much more there's this sort of crazy big 
dark, funny, sick, twisted world. Um, but what's wonderful, I think, is in, you know, in one scene you'll have, uh, you know, I think you'll be sort of laughing and then scared and then also sort of feeling very sorry for people in it as well. So it's quite a big um, mishmash of themes. I think because of that, the, the tone it, that it takes is so different that it's quite, Michael Schamberg said that the reason he wanted to make this movie was because when he saw the original, um, the audience didn't know what he was in the cinema and he said half the audience laughed and the other half didn't the other half were quite sort of horrified by this film and he said that interested him this sort of this sort of pull and you can feel that when you're in a big room with people if you're just watching it um on a cinema on your own uh, sorry, like a sofa on your own you probably wouldn't you know you just sort of take what you but if you're sat there watching going oh my god this is horrific and then someone next to you's laughing i think it's quite an interesting experience cold pursuit is a film about uh, Nels Coxman, he's just been uh, named Citizen of the Year, and uh, his uh, young boy is um, inadvertently killed by a drug uh, ring or drug uh, gangsters. And then uh, he uh, doesn't accept the idea that he was, uh, uh, you know, he's written off as just a drug user. So he decides to go look for who actually, you know, killed him. Uh, it's a story about, you know, he's a snow plow, plow driver. He certainly is uh, not accustomed to criminal life or violence prior to this. So he's an amateur that ventures into a uh, deeply criminal and, uh, and dangerous world as well. Uh, and being highly motivated is perhaps his only advantage. And also being an amateur has some beginner's luck. Um, but at some point he, uh, you know, he, he runs out of options and people start to suss out what uh, is actually happening and he creates a lot of uh, mayhem because of what is, you know, it's like he's set this huge destru uh, destruction in motion. Originally was, uh, I thought, uh, when the phone rang and people wanted to buy the rights, it was uh, somebody else would end up doing it. Um, it was Michael Schamberg, uh, the producer of this film, that asked me to do it. Um, and the idea of having Liam do it was very attractive. I think uh, he's a wonderful actor. I've been a huge fan since the uh, uh, first time I saw him. Uh, and the opportunity to make the film for a new audience with the uh, uh, you know, great uh, access to, you know, possible world-class actors in all these roles, because there are a lot of roles in this. That in itself was really uh, quite tempting. I think Liam has a unique quality, aside from being terribly experienced and having done all sorts of films, you know, is that he's not afraid to challenge himself. He's not afraid to try new things. Uh, I think he wanted to do something other than just straight action and this certainly offers that. As, uh, uh, and the fact that he's still hungry and still uh, really keen to explore uh, you know, his acting uh, made that all the more interesting because you think you know who he is, you know, he's almost this iconic uh, revenge guy and then all of a sudden he goes off and does something different with it, you know. Uh, and in such an effortless way, uh, I think that's quite unique. Tom Jackson just has a very imposing and uh, uh, You know, he's an aura about him. When he walks into a room, he just, uh, he's, he's, you know, physically a big man, but also his, his presence is very uh, impressive in a way. At the same time, he's a very kind-hearted and, uh, uh, you know, he's not, he, he doesn't uh, talk a lot necessarily. He's he's very kind and, and, and quiet guy. And I think, because he was supposed to be the leader of a group that he quite obviously felt comfortable with and also was not afraid to uh, 
allowed to be individuals, you know. The, uh, that requires a certain kind of self-confidence, which he has. He has a quiet self-confidence about him. As opposed to Viking, who really is somebody who is uh, a narcissistic, uh, preoccupied with everything uh, from his own dialogue to his own clothing. And as a result, he gets all these uh, yes-men, um, people who are terrified to show their own individuality. That requires to be playful and, uh, and, uh, and have access to that kind of madness that the Viking has. It's not a lot of actors who, who are able to, to pull that off. And we did try, you know, looked in different uh, avenues. And, and when I met uh, Tom Bateman, I just knew that he was the right guy. I met him in London. Um, yeah, he has a charm. Uh, but at the same time, he's uh, perfectly able to be that killer, you know. Well, they're important for different reasons, but as overall, they have one thing in common, which is, you know, these self-important men who uh, are oblivious to the, you know, humor around them. Uh, uh, they see them as just trouble, so they all basically want to get out of harm's way or get the hell out of Dodge, you know. Uh, uh, Liam's wife, uh, Laura, she obviously uh, can't abandon him until he just becomes obviously uh, just somebody she can't relate to, and I think she sends him a wonderful <laughs> Note at the at the end. Uh, I think she, that's probably the funniest uh, humorous uh, for me anyway. The humorous moment. Uh, uh, Aya, who is uh, Tom Bateman or Vikings' uh, wife, you know, she's linked to him through having a child together. Uh, she's doing everything she can to have him ex being exposed through his own action as the terrible father that he is. So she keeps constantly, you know, nudging and hoping to, you know, get him to trip up and eventually make that big mistake so she can grasp him from him. Uh. Cold Pursuit is a story of revenge, but it's a story that encompasses satire, that allows us to laugh at things that we wouldn't normally laugh at. We might even be guilty when we laugh. We might feel guilty when we laugh in this film, but we laugh a lot. And when we think about what's the value of entertainment, one of them is to capture our imagination, create a magical world that we can live in, but at the end of the day, be entertained. And part of entertainment and maybe the most important part of entertainment for me is laughter. So when you leave the theater from cold pursuit, like it or not, you're gonna feel good. My character walks a parallel path uh, with Liam's in that I lose my son in this film. And unbeknownst to my character, um, I sit over here in my own separate little movie. Liam is here, Tom is here, and we each have a journey. And my journey is in real time an arc that starts with the death of my son and at the end uh, ends with the death of the villain with two unlikely heroes. I only cross paths with him once, and I only engage with him once, and that's because nobody else seems to get the job done. So I get the pleasure as an actor, as a character, um, to be this sole person. And my life is kind of like that. I kind of like to think that I'm the only guy who can solve this problem, for crying out loud. Can't you guys get this done? And then, I, you know, you just kind of, well, it's got to get done. Maybe I'll just do it myself. The reason I came to this project was because it made my wife laugh. 
When she laughed, I found pleasure. And I said, okay, maybe I'll take this serious. Maybe I'll take a read of this and look at it closely and decide whether this is something that at the end of the day uh, I might be able to bring something to this mix that would also bring something to me. And it did in that this is the kind of a character I've never played. Um, and at the same time, um, being able, able to modestly emulate characters that have taught me. I'll say this, you, you probably didn't see Al Pacino on set, but he was there. I studied him. And maybe you, you didn't see other characters, but you can go through a list of villains, gangsters. Go look for a gangster. And they were on set because I studied them. And I was very, very happy to do this. We didn't work long together, but it was lasting. I, I so enjoyed my time with Liam, and I look forward to, in the future, spending some time with Liam. Not necessarily Niels, but Liam. I had to find truth. So I had to look at places in my life that were truthful in a level with this character. And here's the most interesting part for me. And I'll ask you the question, as I have others. Do I look like a homeless guy to you? Do I look like a drug addict to you? Well, in 1988, I lived in a hole underground, and I was addicted to drugs. And there was a period of time between Christmas and New Year's where the creator came to me. And he says, and I was crazy back then. I used to talk to the creator, he talked back. And he came to me and he said, I'm going to make you a deal. And it's in the film. You can hear it in the film. He said, I don't want to make you a deal. I said, what's that? And he said, well, I'm going to send you an angel. And that angel is going to be worse off than you. And if you help that angel, I'm going to help you. And that brought me here to you. That I don't actually know how to shoot a gun. I, somebody, somebody thought I knew how to paddle a canoe and they thought I knew how to use a shotgun. So they gave me a shotgun. They didn't give me a canoe, but they gave me a shotgun. I never fired that shotgun. I think it ended up in a revolution somewhere. I think I gave it to somebody and it went off to some revolution. But I, but I don't know how, how to do that. It's not in my fiber. But let me tell you what is in my fiber. What is in my fiber is, oh, listen, my brother said this to me. He said, I said, mm, I don't really hate anything. And he said, what do you mean you don't hate anything? I said, well, maybe there's some things I don't like. I don't like misogyny. I don't like racism, bigotry, tyranny, oppression. I don't like those things. But I don't know if there's anybody I don't like. Well, you might know somebody that is like that, but I'm not saying you would. But if you do, start hanging out with other people. I live in Canada. I live 45 minutes from the site where we actually were in the, in the mountains with all that snow. That's where I live. So it's, you know, it's terrific. The whole film was, you know, in locations that I knew. We went out to Victoria and some stuff was shot in the interior of BC. But it's awesome, it's, you know, working at home. You work in your backyard, right? They can expect to be entertained, to be engaged, and to laugh. <laughs>